Hello, this is eLife Reflections. Welcome to another time of study. Today, we will be reflecting on the topic, the first martyr of the gospel. And our scripture is taken from Acts chapter 7, verses 57 to 60. I read from the NLT. Then they put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats and laid it down at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell on his knees, shouting, Lord, don't charge them with the sin. And with that, he died. In chapter 6 of Acts of the Apostles, we read about Stephen, one of the 12 appointed by the Apostles to serve in the food program. One day, some men engaged him in a debate, but they could not stand against the wisdom with which he spoke. As a result, they persuaded some men to lie against Stephen. He was arrested and brought before the High Council for questioning. Instead of defending himself, Stephen took the opportunity to preach. He gave a historical account of God's love and agenda from the Old Testament to God's plan of salvation through Christ. When Stephen accused the people for killing Jesus, they were raged. They rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and stoned him to death. I would have us to do a review of today's passage by answering the following. And, and as we go through this, just picture it. Just picture this episode. What did the leaders do after Stephen told them that he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God? Reference verse 57. What did the leaders do after they rushed out on Stephen? We can find that in verse 58a. At whose feet? Did the leaders place their coats when they were stoning Stephen? And this is very important. You find that in verse 58b. What was Stephen's prayer as the people stoned him? We find that in verse 59. And finally, when Stephen went on his knees, what did he tell the Lord in prayer? We find that in verse 60. I would have us to do a recap of these verses and again picture the story. We are told that the Jewish leaders put their hands over their ears and began to shout as it were not to listen to Stephen again. The leaders rushed out at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. The Jewish leaders took off their clothes and laid them at the feet of Saul. But Stephen prayed as they stoned him and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Finally, Stephen again shouted and said, Lord, don't charge them with the sin. And with that, he died. Wow. In response to the above, what are some of the traits that Stephen exhibited that you and I can learn from? Derived from the acronym of the acrostic martyr, here are some valuable lessons worth emulating. Letter M in the acronym Martyr. We are told that Stephen was a man full of God's grace and power, performing great miracles among the people. Acts chapter 6 verse 8, it reads, Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Letter A. In the acronym Martyr, he was anointed and spoke with wisdom and with the power of the Holy Spirit. We can find that in Acts chapter 6 verse 10. And I will read that from the Passion Translation. The Bible says that, But the Holy Spirit gave Stephen remarkable wisdom to answer them. His words were prompted by the Holy Spirit and they could not refute what he said. Letter R. In the acronym Martyr, 
we are told that Stephen was resolute to present the salvation plan of God from the Old Testament rather than to defend himself. And we find that in Acts chapter 7 verse 2. Stephen answered, brothers and fathers, listen to me. Before our ancestor Abraham had gone to live in Haran, the God of glory appeared to him in Mesopotamia. He preached from verse 2, as it were, until he was stopped in verse 53. Letter T, in the acronym Martyr, Stephen was tough at heart, disregarding the rage of the people. He went ahead to tell them what he saw. And we find that in chapter 7, verse 56. The NIV puts it this way. Look, he said, I see the heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Letter Y. In the acronym Martyr, Stephen was yielded to the Holy Spirit. And looking up, he saw a better glory that awaited him. We can find that in Acts chapter 7 verse 55, the Bible has this to say that Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at the right hand of God. Where do we look when we are in trouble? Stephen looked up. And finally, the second letter R in the acronym Martyr. Stephen was ready to release his accusers and he asked Jesus to forgive them before he died. Acts chapter 7 verse 60 And falling on his knees he cried out with a loud voice, Lord do not hold the sin against them. And when he said this he fell asleep. He didn't curse them and ask them to rot in hell. He prayed for them. Hallelujah. Remember, friend, that even though Stephen was full of faith and grace and power, he did not defend himself. He defended the gospel. His death brought more persecution for the church. Yet God used it to spread the word to the ends of the earth. And we are told in Acts chapter 8 verse 1, that on that day widespread persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. Most believers except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Remember what Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8? Child of God, you and I must preach the gospel even if it means dying in the process. Amen. In conclusion, what have we learned? We have learned about Stephen, the martyr, but he was a man full of God's grace and power, anointed, and he spoke with wisdom and with the Spirit. He was resolute to present the salvation plan of God. He was tough at heart, disregarding the rage of the people. He yielded to the Holy Spirit and he was ready to release and forgive his accusers before he died. Mm. I don't know how this message has blessed you, but if you don't mind, let us pray. Sweet Holy Spirit, like Stephen, please fill us with grace and wisdom that we may proclaim your word with unrestrained boldness. Amen. Beloved, this is all that time would allow us to share today. I pray that the Lord will touch your heart with this message also that you and I will be resolute, you and I will be ready not to defend ourselves, but the gospel, even if it means dying in the process. And don't forget that the man at whose feet their clothes were laid became the greatest apostle. Till I come your way again, is always Suska wishing you, Jesus, stay blessed. Amen.